Hello and welcome to Skill of the Week for Slab Pot Part 2. And so we have all of our slabs down here that we made yesterday. Okay, our two short walls, our top, our bottom, and our two long walls. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and unwrap the bottom. I don't need to unwrap the top yet because I'm not going to use that till the end. Okay, so carefully take your slabs out. Don't let them get stretched or anything like that. Lay, place them on your bat. Okay, I'm going to move this so that I can kind of get this a little bit closer. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> put a long wall together with one of my short walls. That way, they kind of support each other, and I don't have to try to hold them up with something else while I'm trying to put other things together. Okay, so you're going to need a needle tool you're going to need a container of water as well as your other materials. Okay, so I'm going to put the short wall on first because that's going to be the easiest wall to, to place. Actually, you know what? Change my mind. I'm going to put the long one, wall on because that's the one that goes all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap this long wall. And they should be a little drier than they were yesterday. They're still flexible. So they'll, they'll still be easily put together, but they're not going to be wobbly or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to hatch my area that I'm going to place this wall. Just like when we hatched where our coil pot coil was going to go. Okay, we want to rough up the surface. It's not a, a neat, beautiful drawing, delicate, and all that. Okay, so then we're going to place a little water on here, and I'm just tapping it on just letting it kind of drip off my fingers. And then I'm going to hatch it again, incorporating that moisture into the base. And I'm going to go ahead and hatch this side, because that's where it's going to be attached. Now, some people say using slip is the best way to go, but really, water does the same thing. <clears throat> And if you hatch well enough, you're not going to have any problems with uh, your pieces not sticking together. Okay, so now I'm going to get this right up on the edge and kind of smash it down into the surface. Okay, and then I'm going to protect the inside while I pull up with my, the back of my thumb and smooth in the base up into the wall, okay? And then go across, smooth that all in. Now you have moisture there, so it should smooth pretty nicely, okay? So you can see it's attached really well. A little bit of seam I gotta smooth out there, okay? You don't want any seam showing. <clears throat> we'll deal with the inside in a minute. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach this short wall. Okay, so now everywhere that wall is going to attach, we need to hatch it. So I'm going to hatch here. And I'm going to hatch here. Add my water. Hatch again. And then I'll do the same for the edges of my short wall. Add a little water. Hatch it again. Now, when doing this one, I like to come in at an angle like this so I can really get it attached in its proper place. Smoosh it up against each other, smoosh it up against the bottom. Okay, so you can see the seams there. Now all I have to do is hold this. I can protect it on the inside, but I like to kind of hold it in place. Smooth those outside edges. 
and then hold it on the inside and smooth that base into the sidewall. And smooth the top. Okay, so now you have it attached here. And no, it's not perfectly smooth because uh, I haven't worked on it, okay, very much. But <clears throat> you can see that it's attached. <clears throat> Excuse me, got the frog in my throat. Okay, and it's nice and smooth. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three seams that we need to deal with. So we need to have our bag of clay. <clears throat> and we're going to make tiny little coils to go into the corners, those seams, so that will give it extra support. Okay, I'm just going to kind of move that off to the side. And I only need a little bit of clay because I'm just going to make tiny little coils, really little ones. Okay, I'm going to take that off and I'll use this one later. So what I want to do is wet it down a little bit so it doesn't get dry. Okay, so a little tiny skinny seam or a coil, I mean, and I'm going to press that just gently because I'm not supporting the outside yet into my seams. Now I'm, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge here because um, I'm going to have to put a slab there. So I don't want to take that all the way to the edge. Now I've got a little piece left and I can put it there, but I need, I need to have a little bit more to stretch all the way across. Okay, so this is a skinny little portion right here. can go over here. And again, I'm not going to go all the way down because I'm going to put a slab there and I don't want a, a coil there in the way. Okay, so with those little coils, I'm going to hold on to the outside of my slab pot and I'm going to press those in and smooth them into the corner. Okay, see how nice and smooth that is? And then do the same thing for this one. And I have to protect the outside to make sure I don't smash through. Okay, this just helps give it a little more support. Okay, and, and I like to make sure that the <clears throat> the coil isn't showing, so I want to kind of smooth it a little bit more. And I might need to smooth it when it's a little bit drier so that I don't have those coils bulging out. Okay, I'm, I'm holding the back of the slab now, pushing this in. Because right now there's it's quite wet down there because I added quite a bit of water. And so it ends up being kind of gushy and makes it hard to smooth it in. Okay, so now have a nice smooth seams there and I'm ready to put up the other two walls. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the other long wall right here. And actually, you know what, I think I want to do the short wall because that will give me room to put a coil in. If I do the long wall, notice how much room. I'm not going to have any room to get my hand in and get a coil in there. So I'm going to do the short wall first. Okay, hatch it nice and well. It doesn't take very long to hatch. It shouldn't anyway. Get some water in there, hatch it again. Really incorporate that moisture because you want to attach your 
slabs really well. Okay. And then I have my long wall. Don't mistake it with your your uh, top. Okay, it's a little bit. Mine's a little bit fatter, so you want to make sure that you don't measure everything all the same size because you can really get things mixed up if you do. <clears throat> And then again, measure my, or not measures, patch my edges. Oh, whoops, I did the long wall, didn't I? I was, had the long wall on my brain, but that's okay because I'm going to be using that next. Get my short wall. Patch the edges. Okay, it's nice and roughed up. Tap some water into it. Patch it again. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Hold on to this wall, and we're going to kind of at an angle smash it into both. Okay, and then Hold it tight so it doesn't go anywhere. Smooth those edges in. Okay, do the same thing with this one. Protecting it on the inside. Smooth it in. Smooth the top. Okay, so now you have an almost made box. Okay, this wall is kind of bulging out a little bit, so smooth that in. Okay, so now I have two more seams that I want to go ahead and get put, get a coil put in. I already have my coil here almost done, so I just need to finish rolling it. Nice and skinny. Okay, skinny, skinny little coil. I'm going to tap that into place. Don't push too hard yet because we're not ready to smooth it in. And then we'll get this one ready. And again, don't go all the way to the edge because we're going to place another, another slab right there. Okay, now I'm going to protect that wall and press this in. Kind of just pressing it right now. And then smooth it into the walls. Whatever is most convenient for you. Now, if you have a hard time getting your, your finger in there, you can use a cleaning tool. So if you use the back of it and you press it in there, okay, it doesn't make it super smooth, but it does press it down in, okay? So then you can just get your finger in there and smooth the edges, okay? So let's try the whole thing with this one. I'm going to use the back of the cleaning tool, press it in. It's almost like the back of my fingernail, and it works okay. It doesn't get everything perfectly smooth, but neither does my finger. So I would just take my finger in there and just smooth it. Okay. Go back, look at any areas that need smoothing. You want it to be a nice, seamless slab pot. Okay. Smooth anything else, like the bottom of the slab pot's looking kind of crusty looking. Okay, and then just kind of look at your walls, make sure they're staying up nice and straight. Okay, so now we're ready for that last slab. And I already have it partially uh, hatched over here, but I'm going to go ahead and hatch this. Now I'm, I'm noticing that my uh, slab here is going all the way to the end. And remember, I thought I had cut it so that it would uh, fit between. So I'm going to just test this. Yeah, so this slab is a little bit long. So I'm going to place it where it's going to go. See how it hangs over a little bit? Oops. Hangs over a little. That's okay. Uh, it's not a problem. I can just lay it in there, mark where it will fit. Looks like right there. Okay, so I made a little mark. And then I can cut that to fit. 
So all I have to do is go get a ruler. Okay, mark that, make sure it's straight, and just trim it. That's not a big deal. And it could have gotten stretched or something. Uh, it might be, I might need to fit a, a bigger coil in there just to make it fit at the top because it looks like it's it's got stretched on one side, but that's okay. Uh, it will work because uh, I'll just make a fatter coil to fit inside. We want to have our measurements exact, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. It's clay. Clay will shrink and stretch and uh, that kind of thing. So it's not a precise science. We can try and make it one as much as we can. Okay, so I'm going to hatch all my edges. Okay, get a little water on the hatching. Hatch it again. Okay, and there I'm going to hatch all of my edges here. I think I'm going to use this bottom part right here. Sorry, I'm standing back a little bit. All the ends that are going to connect together need to be hatched. Okay. Put a little water on those. Quickly hatch them again. Just make sure that you get them nice and roughed up. Okay. Oops. Bumped my wall. Okay. Might have to go back and fix that a little. Okay, so now I'm going to start with the bottom and I'm just going to lean it in, press it down, and then I'm going to press the other walls into it. And I can see that my uh, walls aren't exactly perfectly straight. If you look at them this way, it kind of has a slightly trapezoid look to it, but it actually kind of looks kind of cool. I don't mind that it's not perfectly straight. Okay, we're going to smooth those in. I'm just holding on to this so that it doesn't go anywhere because I have kind of a narrow <clears throat> inside and it's tall. So if you've got big hands, you don't want to make it this narrow because it's going to be hard for you to get your hands in there and get a coil in and smooth it and all that. Okay. And then I just pull my sides up a little bit more, make sure everything is straight. Okay, and then I have one, two, three seams in there that I need to get coils in. So this coil is a little bit on the dry side, so I'll get some water on there. I'm going to just place that in there. Got to make another coil. Again, super skinny coils. You don't want fat coils because then you can see where you have put your uh, coils into the seams. You want them to be really skinny so they kind of just meld in there. There we go, super skinny. And then we're going to put that one across the bottom, place it in there gently, up the side, and then I can just pinch that off. So I can lift it up here see the little coils in there. Okay, and I'm going to smooth those in. Actually, it might be easier for me to wait to smooth this in because watch, my hand is hardly ever, hardly fitting in there very well at all. So, I'm going to make it, I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to hatch the top all the way around because we're going to attach the lid. Okay.
So yeah, you might want to make a, a wider box if you are, if you have big hands. My hands are pretty small, and if you have large hands, it's going to be really hard to get, especially uh, with a box this tall, to get your hands down in there and smooth in the coils. So again, one more hatching. And now I can unwrap my top, my lid portion. Looks like there's a piece of paint on my box. Okay, and then, oops, I want to hatch all the way around the outside edge of this. Again, a little bit of water. Hatch it again. And by the way, I've made many, many, many of these boxes. And the slip really isn't necessary. Water is perfectly usable. I've never had a box break on me. You just need to make sure that you attach it well. Okay? So lay it down on the edges of your walls, press it down on the outside edges, hold it down, smooth it in. It looks like I've got a mismeasurement here where it's stretched, you know, just like my short wall did. So I, I can take pieces off or I can smooth them into the sides, whatever works. Like here, I'm just going to push it down into that corner. And nothing's saying that your box has to have sharp edges either. If you want to round the corners, um, you can do that. This is your box. Yes, we have the basic structure here, but it's up to your creativity to make it how you like. So smoothing it all in. And that can also disguise maybe a little bit of a, a skewed box, a wonky box. You know, as long as you have all your seams uh, put in there nicely, you should come up with a really nice box. Okay, now normally I would take more time, get uh, a little bit more smoothing done, because you can see that there's an edge here. But I'll smooth that a little bit more when I take the lid off. So uh, your lid, this part, should not be sagging down at this point. It should be fairly flat, and mine's fairly flat. It's, it's sloping a little, but not too bad. And uh, if it's sloping a lot, it's slumping down, that tells me that your, uh, your clay is too wet. So it needs to be a little bit more hardened. All right. So now we cut the lid in. Here's the fun part that I like. Because we can get really creative with how we cut this lid. Okay, so I usually start with the blade on a corner so that I can see it when I come back around. Okay, so I'm just going to start it here. And you want to have some sort of curve happening with it. But you don't want to come up all the way to where your seam's going to be. But you don't want to come down too far either because you want your container to be able to hold stuff. If you come down with your lid too far, then your container is pretty much useless. So a nice curve. This is going to hold your, your lid in place. So I'm just going to come around. Okay. Follow it around. Maybe come up a little. A little more curve works better than less curve because uh, you don't want it too flat. If it's too flat, then the lid will slip off of there really easy. And you want your lid to hold in place nicely. Okay, now I can see that my I started over here because I made that little mark. So I want to meet that mark. There. 
and I've cut all the way through so I should be able to lift my lid off really easily and I can lay it to the side. Now notice that since I put my lid on I now have through four areas that I need little coils and you can see my previous little coils that I didn't smooth in because it was hard for me to get my hand in. Well now I can smooth those in. And again I'm supporting the outside while I'm smoothing that coil in. And then I can go in and smooth these other coils in. Oops, bonked my wall again. Darn it. Now, don't worry if you, you uh, have some trouble and you're like, oh, but I, my hand is hitting my other wall and it's bulging it out. Um, because you're going to be able to move those walls back in place. They're still attached at the bottom. If you attached them well, you shouldn't worry about, uh, you know, hitting your hand on the side. Like, I've been doing that. See how I'm hitting my hand on the side here, trying to get in here? And then you just move it back in place when it's time to put it up to dry. Now, if you hit it so hard that you knock it right off and uh, it's got a big crack on the bottom or something, well, then it wasn't attached very well in the first place. So you want to make sure that you really attach things well. Okay, so now I can smooth that in. All that is nice and smooth. So now you can tell my box is bowed a little bit because I had my hands in there. So I'm just gonna push those walls back in. Okay, and then I can set that off to the side and I can work on my uh, seams that I have to go in to my top, my lid. Okay, grab a little bit of clay. Again, make my skinny coils. It's getting really dry because my hands have a lot of clay on them and I have cl clay on the table. So I need to add a little bit of moisture to my coil. Move this off to the side so I can work with a drier area. If you try to roll a coil on a really wet area of the table, it's just going to stick and move around. It's not going to go where you want it to go. So you just might have to move it to another area. One thing I didn't mention yesterday when I was uh, talking about how to make your slabs was clean up. It's the same thing as when we were cleaning up for the coil pot. You need to wash down your table with a damp sponge and then use dry paper towels until it's completely dry. But you also need to wash off your ruler. And remember we're using a ruler without cork. Wash off your ruler, dry it, put it in the shelf. Okay, so we've got a nice uh, skinny coil here. Put it where I can reach it. And place coil inside all the way around the top. Actually it would be yeah, it's the top of the, the pot, but it's the bottom with what I'm working with here. And I have plenty to go all the way around, which is really nice. I don't have to do any more rolling of the skinny coil. Okay, so any excess clay, I'm going to dip it in the water because it's kind of dry, and then stick it back in there. Okay, so now, right now it's really ugly looking. I don't have it smoothed in or anything, but once I get it smoothed in, I'm just going to tap it in place right now and not smooth it in because I want to finish this video. Once all that's smoothed in, then I want to place my lid back on gently because this is how you're going to make sure that all of your walls line up. You're gonna When you lay it on there, you're going to make sure, see how, how we've got this part sticking out? I don't know if you can see it on the video. You kind of see it under my finger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that lid out just slightly or push the wall in. Okay, and here I've got the wall sticking out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to lift my lid up, push it in a little. Okay, make sure that it lines up all the way across. Okay, everything is nice and smooth. Okay, so run your fingers on it. Make sure that your lid lines up with your box. 
And this is uh, where you get to do some fun things with it too. If you wrap it at this stage, just wrap it with your plastic wrap from your slabs, then you can go back the next day and you can start carving, excuse me, now I have hiccups. <laughs> you can start carving designs in it and that kind of thing. So there's your basic uh, thing for making a, a slab pot. And <clears throat> you can take this in any direction that you want. You can actually um, make it a, a different, a slightly different shape as long as your uh, walls end up being nice and straight up and down. Uh, it doesn't matter if it has a skewed look like mine has a slightly trapezoid look to it. It's not perfectly straight. But I think what I'll do with this particular box is uh, as I'm cleaning it, I'll round the edges and give it some carving and that kind of thing. So uh, it'll end up looking really nice. But you want to make sure that you do draw, let the lid dry on the box so that these shrink at the same rate. If you take them off and let them dry separately, your lid will not fit. So that is big. All right, so that's the end.